Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. The compressor uh, impeller and now we consider both together. So, this is what we have stopped. Now, what we can do just uh, we can consider both the impeller and the diffuser together and uh, then uh, analyze the system. So, the overall stagnation pressure ratio. So, that would be P naught 3 by P naught 1, which is 1 plus eta c T naught 3 minus T naught 1 by T naught 1 to the power gamma by gamma minus 1. So, this is eta is the efficiency of the compressor where we have already 3 1 2 this 3 or is your condition at diffuser exit. So, there and 1 and 2 I have already known. Now, we can at the same time we can say that T naught 3 should be T naught 2 because this is adiabatic flow. So, once you have that claim that T naught 3 equals to T naught 2, you can write this P naught 3 by P naught 2. Now, I will just 1 plus eta c gamma minus 1 u 2 square by a naught 1 square 1 minus w r 2 by u 2 tan beta to the power gamma by gamma minus 1. So, already so this is the expression and now T naught 3 becoming equal to T naught 2 then the ratio of the press, uh, temperature rise which we have already derived. So, that is replaced here. Now, at impeller exit, so that is the condition 2. So, the absolute Mach number is M 2 which will be V 2 by A 2 and we can write all the other information related to the velocity triangle for example, uh, V 2 square equals to V r 2 square plus V theta 2 square which would be in turn W r 2 square. So, we are replacing what and this would be U 2 minus W r 2 tan beta whole square. So, what this? So, one has to be careful I mean in the sense you have to be uh, kind of uh, well aware of the velocity triangle at different location because all this what we are writing from the vector calculus nothing else. And A 2 square would be gamma r t 2 which is gamma r t 1 t 2 by t naught 1 which is A naught 1 square by T naught 1, T 2 by T naught 2, T naught 2. So, that is third in and we have T naught 2 by T naught 1 we can write 1 plus gamma minus 1 by M 2 square. So, that gives me A 2 square equals to a naught 1 square by T naught 2 by 
T naught 1, T 2 by T naught 2 which is A naught 1 square T naught 2 by T naught 1 into 1 by 1 plus gamma minus 1 m 2 square. So, if we rather write in a slightly in a different way. So, T naught 2 by T naught 1 is 1 plus T naught 2 minus T naught 1 divided by T naught 1, which is again you are expanding that. So, this what you get 1 minus W R 2 by U 2 tan beta. Now, what you can do whatever we have obtained so far. Now, if you combine equation 11 and 14, what you get is that m 2 equals to a by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 a. So, where a is the expression which involves a all this term that we have derived. So, this would involve E 2 by A naught 1 square and then you have 1 minus W what 2 by U 2 tan beta that square plus W what 2 by u 2 whole square that is in the numerator and the denominator you will have 1 plus gamma minus 1 u 2 by a naught 1 square 1 minus w r 2 by u 2 tan beta. So, that is what you have. Now, one can find out this uh, uh, dependence of now P 3 by P naught 1 is essentially the function of M 2 beta and all this. So, different change of angle you will have different situation. So, one can uh, look at the plot how this would look like for example, let us say if I have to plot here P 3 P naught 3 by P naught 1 and this side is the U 2 by A naught 1. So, the plots will go like this. So, this is how the things would change. So, that is how your increasing beta this might be beta 0 this could be 15, this could be 30, this could be 45. I mean for particularly let us say eta c is fixed or given and also for the ratio of the u 2 also something given. So, when these two parameter are given then you can see this and this is could be somewhere the line belongs. Now, for same blade and inlet condition, mm. so beta naught which this curve actually tells you that for a given blade speed where the rpm is given and inlet conditions are known, then beta 0 which is short, uh, radial blade is the maximum pressure ratio that it gives. So, for a particular ratio of the U 2 by A naught 1 this this guy is giving you the maximum one. So, this is what it tells. Now, I can or one can look at the variation of Mach number M 2 with the u 2 by a naught 1. So, that also 
varies in a particular way. So, like this, this varies. So, again you can see the situation where this is again beta 0 and that is the increasing beta. So, this could be 15, 30. So, this how the m 2 varies and all this. So, one can say for same u 2 by a naught 1 which is let us say this is a particular point. So, when beta decreases m 2 increases. So, that is how it happens I mean 0 is the maximum Mach number that you have at the exit location. So, that means the diffuser inlets have supersonic flow at lower beta. So, once you say that when the diffuser inlets have supersonic flow at lower beta, so this will lead to immediately another problem there could be the occurrence or the existence of possible existence of shock waves. So, that in turn makes the design difficult, makes it difficult for design. So, these are interlinked if you look at the particular blade configuration or what a kind of blade configuration one should opt for these are sort of related to the flow conditions and what you have. So, when you have shock waves there would be other consequences as well. So, shock waves obviously reduces P naught 3. So, which in turn the overall pressure ratio that is P naught 3 by P naught 1 which uh, also decreases. So, when the shock wave would be there because of these different conditions. So, P naught 3 actually reduces and once P naught 3 reduces it will reduce the overall pressure ratio. So, this is called the shock induced separation. Okay. So, this particular phenomena often known as. So, one can say for beta 0 is not preferred or used for higher P naught 3 by P naught 1. That means, if you are aiming for higher pressure ratio, then one should not use the radial blade. Okay. So, what it allows or rather paves the way for using the most preferred one is the backward leaning blade. So, that is what backward leaning blade is widely used or preferred or whatever you can think. So, all these are having issues with different kind of blades. Now, as we have already discussed this particular components and all these things they are exposed to the uh, higher angle of uh, rotation. So, there are issues of the centrifugal stresses. So, centrifugal stresses are developed and that because of the rotation. So, this on the blades due to rotation. So, this is one of the ongoing problem or always being a problem for this uh, kind of rotating machines because of the rotation the blades or the any um, structure which is there 
they are exposed to this rotation they facing I mean they face this kind of um, high stresses. So, that is one aspect of it that one should know there are um, centrifugal stresses which are developed on the blades due to the rotation. So, what that leads to because this has other bottlenecks like these stresses which are developed they impose a limitation on the blade speed. So, once you have lower blade speed you will have lower level of stresses if you have higher blade speeds I mean this is again we are talking about in terms of let us say keeping the RPM is fixed in that case uh, if you reduce blade speed stress would be less if you increase the blade speed your stress level would go high. Secondly for let us say the rotating disc for a rotating disc so that what happens this centrifugal stress are proportional to the rim speed. So, that also kind of lead to the design for the material strength. So, that is another important or the choice of material or the what kind of material should be chosen for this kind of things that also kind of dictated by this kind of things. Now, other thing is that if you have let us say single sided impeller of light body then obviously, u is limited to certain values limited to certain values and if you have certain values that will also give you a certain overall pressure ratio and typically single sided impeller this is somewhere around 460 meter per second which will limit these things to around 4 and now, if you use some kind of a let us say titanium based material, titanium based material, uh, so that will also lead to the these stresses are always higher on for cut blades. So, that is another important I mean the stresses are always higher for cut blades. So, that is another issue. So, once you have that in turn, so that poses a limitation on pressure. So, these are the certain things. Now, if you have some slightly more discussion on the other things like what you look at the from equation 1 which is our uh, shaft torque equation which clearly suggests few things that number 1 the forward leaning blades produce highest delta H. Okay. So, which means it can absorb maximum shaft power and that because as M 2 increases which reduces static pressure recovery and efficiency of the radial diffuser 
So, that means the forward leaning blades if you use that produce the highest delta H. Though so, that it is able to absorb the maximum shaft power and that happens because the M2 increases. So, once the M2 increases that reduces static pressure recovery and efficiency of the radial diffuser which also means that the uh, structural loading also increase. So, structural loading increases at the same time. Okay. Now, when you compare with the backward leaning case, so the backward leading blades that reduces absorption, reduces absorption of shaft power as M2 decreases. So, which will give us higher static pressure recovery. plus efficiency of diffuser also goes up. So, there is a one to one comparison what happens with the forward leading blade and what happens with the backward leading blade. So, once you increase the M2, so one case for forward leading it absorb maximum shaft power, but the backward leading reduces the absorption of the shaft power. So, once that happens this gives you the higher static pressure recovery and the efficiency of the. Mm. So, I mean if you see there are issues with this. So, that way one can always claim that the optimal solution is sort of an using a straight blade due to structural loading and power absorption. So, that is is there. So, that is what the optimal solution, but this will have difficulties in design, difficulties in design because there are issues that already we have uh, discussed that could be the shock waves. Now, the last one more point which one can note about the pressure rise. So, the pressure rise increases with wheel speed. Okay. So, that way if you look at it, so obviously the backward leaning blade would be backward is always preferred if the if the structural issue is is taken care of. So, if you can take care of the structural part or issues which are related to the structural part then one can always go for backward because uh, with the rotational speed you can have higher pressure rise and that is what essentially you want because the final objective of this is that you want to get higher pressure rise. Now, we introduce another thing which is important here is called slip. So, this is pretty much since we are in the um, this happens in the rotor frame of reference. Okay. Now, what happens is the flow in the impeller flow in impeller is primarily radial and it bends in the opposite direction to the wheel rotation. due to 
Coriolis forces which will be proportional to 2 omega w r. So, that is another now new thing which is coming into the picture the existence of the Coriolis forces and that would happen because things are rotating frame of reference. So, the counter circulation in the impeller passage toward trailing edge is produced. So, one can I mean we can draw this picture and then explain is a little bit better let us say um, we have a blade like this. So, we go like this. So, th uh, these are the so this is the rotation omega. So, this is obviously forward leaning. So, if I draw the triangle this is what it goes out then this would be the another vector component and finally, this. So, this u 2 v 2 w 2 and the so this is the angle beta. So, this would be the angle beta and there could be a situation which is so let us draw this little bit better way. So, you get okay, this is my w 2 and I can have as per the angle. So, so this is another portion which is called the so this guy is the slip angle so that angle is the slip angle so similar thing one can look at uh, for a backward leaning blade so we can draw like this and this should go like this you will have that that is our velocity vector. So, this is u 2 v 2 w 2 and then you have this. So, this one is beta 2 and this angle is the essentially this angle is called the slip angle. Okay. So, what happens? So, the when the rotation is in this direction, so this is your backward leaning. So, what happens is there that when there is a rotation and this is let us say the forward, so you have a circulation like this counter circulation. So, these are the counter existence of the this case also like this. So, there is a counter circulation which exists there. Now, the this counter circulation in the impeller passage towards the trailing edge. So, this is leading and this is trailing towards the trailing edge is produced due to the presence of tangential pressure gradient and Coriolis force. So, these are produced due to tangential pressure gradient and Coriolis force. Okay. Now, what it does? So, when you have this counter circulation, so this is what the counter circulation. Now, this counter circulation uh, when there are counter circulation this also causes in reaction in absolute whirl. So, absolute swell there is a reduction therefore, reduction in the power absorption. So, power absorption and in turn PRC also goes down. So, what essentially it happens is that you have this existence of this counter circulation which is causing this kind of 
problem. So, you have these blade passages and that because of the rotation you one you have the coriolis forces and then there would be slip. So, we will stop here and finish this discussion on the slip in the next lecture.